Good evening, and uh, I invite Arun Mohan to start. All right, sir. So to introduce uh, our today's moderator, Ms. Kripa, I uh, turn on Jarvis, who could do a very better introduction, I guess. So let's see how he does it. Good evening to all the exuberant educators. I welcome you all to the 149th web training series of CBSE Bharat Sahodaya. Now I take it as a pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Ms. Kripa Tachambalath. Ms. Kripa is a trainer by avocation. She is basically a teacher of English. She is a holder of 11 years pedagogical experience at various reputed institutions in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Being an academic director of the LEEA education company based out of Coimbatore, she is doing communicative English training for schools, colleges and corporates. Ms. Creeper found her niche in communication training. She is an advocate of early childhood education and she is a lifetime member of Early Childhood Development Forum ECDF. Guwahati, Assam. We are so glad to have you with us, ma'am. Now I would request you to take over the session. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So I wholeheartedly invite you once again, ma'am. Thank you. This thank grand you. Session. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Arun Mohan. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Totally audible. Okay. Yeah. Hello and welcome to all the participants for the web training series on holistic le lesson planning conducted by BTAC in association with Bharat Sahodaya. A lesson plan is a document that outlines the content of your lesson step by step. It is a list of tasks that your students will undertake to help and guide your teaching. Today's session will be enriching and absorbing as most educators find it challenging to create simple, doable, and appropriate lesson plan. Before we get started, uh, let me welcome all the participants once again with a gentle reminder to keep a notepad and pen ready to jot down points. We would appreciate keeping your device camera switched on during the session. You may post your queries in the chat box we have a question and answer session at the end, where all your queries will be addressed. We request you to raise your hands and wait for your names to be called out during the question and answer session. Stay connected till the end. Change is the hallmark of educational scenario. Keeping pace with innovative knowledge and its propagation is the key to success. We have a visionary, who strives to achieve excellence among the educators across India and abroad by imparting updates in the various fields of education through seminars and interactive programs. He has distinguished himself in implementing tough decisions. An iconic leader in the field of education, I extend a warm welcome to the founder of BTAC, that is Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a consortium of educators and teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them together to empower the nation. And his, uh, the pattern of Bharat Sahodaya, CBSC master trainer and deputy training coordinator of Trantrum region. And the list goes on. Yes, I'm talking about Dr. Abdul Salam sir. And uh, with pleasure, I invite him to address the participants. Well, good evening, uh, everybody on board. A respected uh, resource person, Ravana, ma'am, moderator, Kripa, Ms. Kripa, and uh, Vice President of Bharat Sakodia, Ms. Annie John, and uh, all the educators, dear friends, well wishers. Welcome all to the 149th web training series. Already you got an introduction how this session is going to take place and how it is going to, is about. And uh, you might have noticed uh, 
it is titled the holistic lesson planning of course all schools every school may follow different uh, you know lesson planning structure but uh, i believe that uh, it should be holistic taking consideration of all the levels of children in your planning so and uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce annie john for felicitation am i audible yes ma'am okay Ms. Annie Chow is a veteran in the field of education, having served ICSC and CBC schools in the capacity of principal. Currently, she is the principal of MAM School Attingle and the vice president of Bharat Sahodaya. I'm privileged to invite Ms. Annie Chow, ma'am, to offer felicitation. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Respected director and founder of. BTEC, CBC Master Trainer, Patrick, mm -hmm. CBC Bharat Sahodia, Dr. Abdul Salam Sir, our resource person, Ms. Bhavana Arora, CBC Master Trainer, Senior Academic Coordinator, Darshan Academy, New Delhi, Moderator, Ms. Kripa Tachimbele, Founder, Zenora Waldrop Inspired School, All Dignitaries, my dearest principals, teachers, and all well wishers, a very warm good evening to one and all. First of all, let me thank God Almighty for giving me and giving us such a wonderful evening. And also, thanks to Dr. Abdul Salam Sir for giving me such a wonderful opportunity. Today, Web training series 149 is going to begin. So first of all, let me congratulate Dr. Abdul Salam, Salam sir for arranging such a wonderful program. And today's topic is how to make a good lesson plan. Actually, this is the need of the hour. School is going to reopen and all the teachers are going to be busy with lesson plan, year plan, and also a very good lesson plan which helps the teacher to make the classroom successful. And each one of us must know the, what are the things to be needed to prepare a good lesson plan. That's what we are going to get from our resource person, Ms. Bhavana Arora. All of us are eagerly waiting for you, ma'am, and your session. Hope that you will be helpful and worthful to each one of us. And I wish all the best to you, ma'am. And congrats and best of luck to our moderator, Ms. Kriba Tachibulet, for coordinating this program. And Wish you all the best, Bharat Sahodia BTEC, for arranging such a wonderful program. And wish you all the best. Have a blessed evening. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Today, we have an eminent resource person, Ms. Bhavana Arora. Ms. Bhavana Arora is an astute educationist with 22 years of relevant experience in teaching CBSC classes, as well as heading the Faculty of English at Darshan Academy, a school of repute in Northwest Delhi. She's a proud recipient of prestigious Delhi State Teachers Award 2017 by Sri Arvind Kejriwal, Chief Minister, and Mr. Mr. Manish Shisodia, Education Minister of Delhi. She has been attending the Central Evaluation Workshop of CPSC of Grade 12 of English as the head examiner for AHE for AISSE Sport Evaluation for years. She demonstrates exemplary public speaking skills in training teachers for capacity building programs and working as an established CBSE resource person, having conducted more than 100 CBSE online and many offline workshops on numerous topics 
ranging from career guidance to NEP 2020, from life skills to school health and wellness, for which she attended five full days training session organized by NCRT. She has also been conducting free and paid workshop for teachers from AIEF platform since last year as their resource person. She underwent a month-long training in February 2022 as a master trainer for CPSC Young Warriors Nest program. She is officially certified for attending six virtual master classes conducted by CPSC with Australian National University and other reputed university of Australia in 2020. She is a member of ELTAI. English Language Teachers Association of India and attended various workshops conducted by them every weekend. She was awarded Teacher Teaching Excellence Award at International United Educationist Fraternity Third International Mecca Summit and National School Awards Function in Delhi on 5th January 2020 and received national felicitation jointly with principal and coordinators as skill and vocational education save award on 12th march 2017 during skill and vocational education summit 2017 another feather in her cap was to receive an international population education award during women empowerment summit by wage jointly with the principal and coordinators in 2017 she was also honored with a certificate of recognition for being a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator, MIE, on 26 December 2018. She is a part of GETI, Global Education and Training Institute, Global Disruptive Education Movement, as an esteemed live session speaker from their official page on Facebook, Facebook wherein she proudly presented at their 13th Education Leadership International Roundtable, the biggest international education conference in India with participants from 40 countries sharing views on spiritual curriculum in Roundtable 6 on 22nd January 2021. Last but not the least, pursuing her hobby, she got a certificate for being a published writer on the initiative of Story Mirror, be a poem, India's biggest online poetry contest in 2020. So ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you the resource person for today, Ms. Bhavana Arora. So over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Ms. Kripa, for such a wonderful introduction. And thank you very much, Mr. Abdul Salam, sir, for giving me an opportunity and all the esteemed members and all my fellow educationists present here. <clears throat> Creative, effective lesson plan is key to effective teaching in class. I hope we all agree to this. And it's also a critical factor in achieving positive student outcome. So with this beautiful notion, let's begin our session today on effective lesson planning. I am just going to share my uh, PPT I seen. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you very much for confirming. So let's start now because uh, I think we have only one, one and a half hours, even little less, and we have so much to share. So very warm and pleasant evening today in Delhi. The weather is really very pleasant. I hope the same there at your places also. So let's begin and start talking about how to make a perfect lesson plan. Knowledge decides what to say. Skill decides how to say. Attitude decides how much to say. And wisdom decides when to say, whether to say or not to say. So this is really very important that we need to have the knowledge, skill to understand how to do things, should have the right attitude and wisdom to use the right things at the right time. Yes. At times of non-achievement of set target, it becomes imperative to take responsibility and commit to a plan to change, whether the grades drop or simply the targets are not achieved. It is never too late or never too early to apply certain changes 
to our strategies or methodologies. I hope we all agree to this. You know, from time and again, there have been changes that all the educators have seen, especially, you know, during and after the COVID time. So it becomes very imperative for all of us to evolve and, you know, keep on working towards getting the desired goals as per the suggestions by CBSC in NEP 2020. Now, uh, we need to understand that, uh, you know, what does the pedagogy, you know, for 21st century skills or competency-based learning talks about? It, it is, I mean, the basic use is to educate students effectively, to enhance students' learning, support students to enhance their capabilities, modify our strategies or style of instructions, to meet the needs of various kinds of learners. You know, it is very important now to educate our students effectively. And for that, it is important that, you know, we support students with their innate qualities, the competency that they're born with. We need to analyze, we need to identify, and then help and support them with the capabilities that our students already have. And for that, it's important that we modify our strategies or style of instructions. So we are going to talk about everything in detail today and to meet the needs of various kinds of learners in our class. Um, we'll be talking about it in detail in the you know, next slides to come. Now there is a need to explore an innovative study of processes by which educators can deliberately transmit their accumulated knowledge. You see, we all are very veteran, we all are very experienced you know, a, a lot of skills to handle the classes of 50 or 60 students. So we all have accumulated knowledge. We have the bundle of skills with us and values, but it is very important that we, you know, uh, transmit it from one batch to the other, one generation, I mean, uh, you know, one batch of students to the other. So that's very important and that's what we need to work on. Now, we need to talk about the responsibilities of school authority also in the light of NEP 2020, because most of you may be the principals or the authority there in school. So we need to engage staff in constructional strategies like setting directions for teachers and students' actions and to prepare them. So it's really very important that, you know, we keep on arranging uh, maybe some kind of sessions or uh, the internal training and to involve them in constructional strategies or maybe you know ask them about all the strategies uh, that they have to set them in the right direction for giving the training to students and we all know that we all are focusing on the education based on 21st century skill and when we talk about 21st century skills you can look at the picture things are very clear we have to talk about critical thinking and problem solving we talk about and in fact, most of us have Atal Tinkering Lab at us. So make our children reflect on all that they learn throughout the day at school or wherever afterwards they go and study. So it's very important that they have some spare time for self-study. That's, we'll, that's where they'll be churning the information and that's how they come forward, you know, with with the, you know, with the knowledge that they have, the skills that they have, they'll be able to identify and will be able to use it. So we have to act as a facilitator. We have to be at the back seat just to provide them the bag and make sure that they are learning the way they want. Now, if you see, true education is one in which students dwell up physically, intellectually, and spiritually, and above all, structured lesson planning which plays a vital role in enhancing their capabilities. You see, once we are planned, it, it becomes, you know, it gives a kind of confidence to you when you enter a class and when you are ready with your equipments, when you are ready for the, for the, with the material that you need for the activities to be conducted in that 40 minutes, 35 or 40 minutes class, you see, you will not be wasting students' very important learning time, yes? So we ought to be prepared. It not only gives you the confidence, but also make your children wait for you and your class because you, they know that you are going to come with some surprise element or maybe something new that they're going to learn today. Otherwise, you know, information is coming to them these days from all corners. 
you know, they are living in an info age. They can learn anything from anywhere. But to be present in the class and to make your presence felt, you need to start with the effective lesson planning. And that's what is the topic for today. So we'll be talking about it in detail, but now I hope you understand how imperative and important and significant this lesson planning is. Now, these are some of the aspects of designing an effective lesson plan. See, we talk about nature of subject first, whatever topic or the subject that you teach. Then NCRT curricular expectations, because we know the learning objectives that we have been using for years. But now NEP 2020 says that the focus should be on learning outcomes. Can somebody write it down in the chat box and tell me what is the difference between learning objective and learning outcome? Anyone? Or if you are allowed to unmute yourself, you can speak, please. I would love to hear you. We do not have much time. Please do it fast. Can I see a response from someone? Yes. Learning objective is vision and outcome is Learning objectives are planned beforehand by the teachers and learning outcome is reflection. Learn by what the, they have, their learning outcome are the result of the teaching learning process. Okay, okay, thank you much for your responses. So uh, let me just uh, talk about it. Learning objective is what teacher thinks that she will be able to make the children achieve and learning outcome is what children actually you see in their behavior, you see in the result. So it is the outcome, it is the result, you know, that you want, that you aim your lesson for. So that is, uh, you know, teacher-centric, you can say learning objective and learning outcome is student-centric, yes? So whatever you aim to achieve, when you see it in the behavior, in the performance, in the outcome of, uh, you know, uh, in children, you realize that you have achieved your outcome. So these are the expectation of NCRT curriculum and uh, learning outcomes. Then subject specific content domains as per CBSC syllabus. So it's very important that we stick to the subject specific content also that because most of the teachers always, you know, if you talk about the senior classes, they generally think that it's always covering the syllabus. You know, they have less time and they need to finish the syllabus fast. But I must tell you, it's never the covering of syllabus. It's always uncovering the content. No matter you take a little more time, but please ensure that your children have learned. They have got what they ought to be or what they should be. Then subject specific cognitive levels are to be kept in mind. Competencies for every learning outcome. We are going to talk about it in detail and then simple pedagogical processes and assessment strategies. So we are going to talk about everything. Uh, and then it also talks about the diverse genres and themes, cross-curricular approach. It is very, very important. Now we talk about the art integration. We talk about the subject integration. We talk about the sports integration. You know, so all these things play a very, very important role. Then we talk about inclusion. same level by the teachers and assessment for them and nurturing multilingual competence. That's also a very important thing because, uh, you know, uh, different languages are to be uh, initiated and to be uh, taught to them so that they actually learn, uh, start learning in their own mother tongue first, which they feel comfortable in and gradually the other languages are to be, you know, introduced to them. Now, how does this in-hand planning help in effective teaching? I you know, gave you the quote initially that uh, effective lesson planning is key to effective teaching. So how does it help? Saves teachers time. We have seen teachers many a time when they get into the class, they do not know what they have to start with. And they ask students and then in case somebody comes to invigilate, I mean, to you know observe the class or something and then they really feel bad because they have not planned it earlier. So it not only helps saving their time because we in 
not in any case are supposed to waste their 35 to 40 minutes class learning time. Yes, teachers preparedness develops interest among students. You, you can see yourself, you know, you are a better judge of your own class. Sometimes when you come out of the class and you, you know, try a new strategy, a new methodology of teaching and it doesn't work, then while coming out, you don't need any observer. Your heart can say that this strategy did not work well or you it required some modification or editing or, you know, it went very well. Students were very happy. And next time, certainly they'll be waiting for your class because, you know, you left it in between. So... It really develops interest among students. They wait for your wait for you and your class, and that's how you know it develops your interest also in teaching. But if you enter a class which is dull, non welcoming, then you will also not be able to give your hundred percent. So it's very important that you generate interest among students for you and your subject and the topic that you're going to teach. For that, it's important that you are ready with the lesson plan. Engages students immediately are not clear and sure, certainly it wastes their time and then they lose interest. So it's very important that you pitch your topic in the class very, very effectively. Then in between comes the second important thing is the questioning, pretext, in-text and post-text. So as to keep your students intact with you throughout, yes, that you know you have you have not left behind them and you have moved ahead so you take them along with the help of questioning so it's very important that pretext in text and post text questions so first pitching the lesson you know how do we start a lesson with their previous knowledge we take them from simple to complex questioning you take them through and at the end reflection is really, really very important. Because if the reflection is not there, you know it is scientifically proven that almost 80% is lost. And we as educators and teachers cannot afford to lose all that we have taught or try to give it to them. So reflection is important. That is why today also we'll keep last 10 minutes for the interaction, for the takeaways that I want to hear from you all that you have learned and you're going to use in your own classes, okay? Then enhances teacher's effectiveness by reducing anxiety. As I told you, if you enter a class and one observer comes in, you really get anxious because you are not prepared. You're not carrying your diary. You do not know what is planned and then how are you going to execute? So it is very important that you have a precise planning in your mind and you have an immaculate execution of the same in order to get 100% learning outcome. Yes, as per your objectives. So it's really very, very important. Now you see, we talk about the competency-based teaching these days, which talks about measurable, explicit competencies, talks about clear learning outcomes. You know, no, no uh, problem, even if you go to a class and after writing the topic, and uh, whatever you want to write, and then you write your learning outcome also on the board. Let children know, you know, what is going to be the outcome of that particular precise planning of this 35 to 40 minutes of your class. Differentiated timely support, meaningful positive assessment. You know, it's, uh, there, are, there are many schools who not only have their half yearly and main annual exams, but they have their periodic tests and they even have weekly tests. We have also started weekly tests in this session in our schools. The purpose behind is to make them learn in small chunks so that, you know, they are ready when, uh, you know, for the half yearly, they are ready for the major portion. So micro testing and then, you know, should be meaningful. Shorter time and Please ensure that, you know, you have taken something each uh, section of your particular question paper that you prepare in the final exam. Uh, when I talk about the board classes 10th and 12th, you know, we have received a circular very recently that there is a change now in the case-based questions and the uh, questions based on application. You know, the, the percentage has been increased from 30 to 40 now. Then you have 20%, uh, which is your uh, MCQs. And then next 40% is your 
long and short questions, which is generally based on knowledge and understanding. So uh, when CBS is also thinking about it, we should also be preparing our children accordingly so that they are able to excel you know, in the examination first and then all the other uh, you know, exams that they take after both. So personalized learning. Another important thing is one-to-one -one interaction. In your class, we understand that sometimes there are students ranging from 30 to 40, 50, and even 60. You know, I've come to know in some schools and classes, the sections go up to J, K, L, and then strength of the class is 50, 60. I do understand at times it becomes difficult, but as long as possible, try and give personalized learning to students because that's what they look forward to. You know, in a, in a class, you get to know like, you know, how, how many children have learned and then there are some who have not got. So you can always interact with them personally later on or, or maybe from home and then whatever way through social media or whatever means you want to use, you try and interact with them. That's very important. If you are able to tap their personal problems, you know, difficulties, then certainly you can, you know, counsel them and uh, make them shine and, you know, come up with flying colors. Then advancement over mastery. So all these things are actually the parts of competency-based learning. Now, I just would like to show you a small video on competency-based learning. Just have a look at it. this so very important till now learning outcomes consist of memorization and comprehension of content so only knowledge and understanding at the most but now cbe competency based learning education what does it say is that learning outcomes consist of deep understanding and application of content to new situations and in the assessment this year 2023 24 the percentage of questions of this sort has been increased by 10%. Yes, so please keep this in mind when you go to the class, when you prepare your lessons, and when you prepare the assessments also. Now see, now the assessment is also, as per NEP 2020, is not only using grades and tests by teachers. Now the focus is on peer assessment also. Focus is on parent assessment also. Focus is also on teacher assessment at the same time, self-assessment, yes? Because that is determined by individual growth and mastery over something, yes? That's important. So that's what uh, we wanted to discuss. Now, what are the important points to remember? While planning a lesson, be clear about the objective and the skill students are acquiring. So we need to be very clear with the objective and the skill. By this particular activity in this particular subject, 
which skill my students are going to acquire. It should be meaningful. It should be making sense. Use of activities, such activities which keep students creatively engaged. Even if you are going for a substitute period or you're going for a home period or you're going for a class where you're not teaching the particular subject, you need to engage students creatively by using many activities. I'll be showing you some examples of the activities that I have recorded particularly for you. I'll be showing it to you just to give you an idea. Avoid creating stress in students so that the class atmosphere is emotionally safe because if you have a very threatening atmosphere in a class, students will not come up, yes, with what they think. So it has to be a two-way communication. So, and you don't have to show yourself as a sage on stage. So it's very important that you give them some space and you know to uh, voice their heart, to voice their mind, and also make them feel emotionally safe. So uh, no verbal pollution and uh, no humiliation, nothing like this in a class. Create an environment where making mistakes is the process that leads to learning. Just keep a hand on your heart and think how many of us actually do it. It's very, very important. So you need to make them feel comfortable and okay. Tell them it's okay not to be okay. Yes, fine. We all are sailing in the same boat and to err is human. Yes, so we need to make them understand this and use of different learning styles. Let me just talk about the learning styles now. Now, uh, let's continue first this. Include numerous ways for students to express their own original thoughts. So give them a chance to speak. Incorporate opportunities to develop critical and creative thinking, brainstorming and problem solving among students. Include their ideas for activities in future lesson planning. I give you an example. In uh, my school, one of my maths teacher she was teaching a particular sum in a particular manner. And there was a girl who, who did it, did the same sum using other method. And the teacher was so very happy because the answer was correct. And she named that method as Neera's method because the name of the girl was Neera. And you won't believe that she went to the other class and she taught her method and with Neera's method. When Neera came to know from the students of the other class that ma'am used her method and named it after her, she was so very happy and you know uh, she you know came up with more ideas and more uh, strategies and tricks and that's how it went on so why not you know uh, honoring them with something good if they actually deserve it if sometimes because students are living in info age as i told you they come up with many solutions and sometimes you know better answers so why not accepting it and thanking them showing so showing you and offering your gratitude for the same and acknowledging it Students really love it. Try it out and it really works. Use their learning time wisely by being pre-planned and organized. As I told you, their learning time should not be wasted by any means. It should be pre-planned and well-organized class. Explore teaching resources in hand to save students learning time. Suppose you learn something today and you want to explore and you want to use it. Do everything beforehand. Don't just wait for after going to the class and then you think about it, then you will never get time and you'll never be able to do it. Don't do it. Whatever you want to plan, please be ready with that beforehand. Explore new resources, things available, and then make sure that you use it for your students. So teacher's job, that is why it is said, it is a duty before self. It is 24 by 7 job because six to eight hours that you spend at school is actually the show time. But before that, rest of the hours, your own preparation time, nobody sees that. But that's what make you an effective teacher and your subject, an effective subject and your style and effective learning style. Yes, do not be afraid of trying new teaching techniques after finding out what they already know. It generates interest in them. So it's always good that you try out new teaching techniques and if it works, no, nothing like it, go ahead with that. And if it doesn't work, you know, you can always uh, try and modify and edit it as per the needs of a class. Because you see, the response of a science student will be different from a response of a humanity student. Yes, not because somebody is uh, 
uh, I mean, has a high IQ and somebody is low. It's just that they are different capacities. So in that capacity, you need to make your, you know, your 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 topic understand. Skeleton before details. Why do I say this? Sometimes when we want our students to do something, you need to give them some example. For example, I give you an example of English. Suppose I tell them to write a letter to a class six student. First, I'll get from them all the things required to write a letter. Why do we write a letter? What are the things required? And then I give them the guided composition. I give them the layout. I talk to them about all the things needed. And then I give them the semi-guided, you can say. First, the guided, comp uh, I mean, uh, the composition. Then I give them semi-guided composition. I show them what I want. I, you know, give them uh, maybe the fillers so that they can write. I give them the structures. And then it, uh, finally, I'll tell them to write a letter on their own. So this is called skeleton before details. Very, very important. You know, don't just expect them to be sages and they know everything and they'll come out with the best answers. You have to go down to their level to understand what do they want and then bring them to the level you want. Enhance the learning experience with classroom displays that include students' work. So, you know, students' chart, students' work, let it be displayed in a class because this really gives them motivation Every time they see my work is displayed here, my teacher is happy with this. So that brings in the confidence and interest in them. Whatever, whatever activities you get done in a class, why not you, you know, display them somewhere so that children always, uh, I mean, it becomes a ready reckoner for others. And for uh, the particular child, it becomes a source of motivation and inspiration. Do not forget to revise the topic with students at the end. As I told you, Keep last five to 10 minutes for revision and the next day, five minutes for recapitulation. Otherwise, all the labor that you have done for the 30, 35 minutes will go waste, will go in vain. So five minutes to introduce, to pitch, then 30 minutes to execute and last five minutes for reflection. Very, very important. Now, how to plan a, you know, effective lesson. For the clarity or purpose of the lesson, Recall or recognize content, relate, cite examples, discriminate, classify or interpret, reason out or formulate a hypothesis, infer, predict and conclude, analyze, synthesize and evaluate content, use content in a situation. So if you use all this, this will certainly be helping you to prepare a clear or to have a clear purpose of the particular lesson that you have planned for your students. Now we are going to talk about multi-sensory learning. As I told you earlier, in our class, we have different kinds of learners. Yes? Can anybody tell me what kind of learners do we have in our class? Visual, kinesthetic, Thank you, Dr. Kanchin, auditory. And the last one, no, there are four types. Logical, okay, slow learn, tactile learners. Thank you very much. You all know everything. I'm so happy. Glad to know that. All right, just to revise once again. Yes, I have a small presentation that I prepared initially. Let me just show you, it is only for two, three minutes. Good morning everyone. Today we'll learn more about multi-sensory learning. This is prepared by Ms. Bhavna Arora, PGT English. There are different teaching styles. One is a lecture method. In lecture method, focus is on verbal input where teacher only talks. Second method is group discussion where teacher talks but encourages discussion as well. The third one is the verbal focus where the emphasis is basically on words. The next is the small groups where teacher aids and facilitates group interaction. The next one is the visual focus where teacher uses lots of visual aids. 
and the last one is the logical sequence where teacher presents material in a step by step form now there is surface learning as well which is a great disadvantage because one is satisfied with mere shallow learning it is risky as no real learning occurs one gets satisfied by studying the minimum of what needs to be learned one relies primarily on rote memorization often exercised at the last minute called cramming motivating one self for grades and one is in a hurry to get it over with now when we talk about the multi sensory learning in this the information enters your brain through four main ways which are sight hearing touch and movement the one you use the most is called your preferred learning style now there are four kinds of learners first when we talk about visual learners they learn by sight and auditory learners who learn by hearing then we have tactile learners who learn by touch and then kinesthetic learners who learn by movement or action auditory learners are basically those learners who can absorb a lecture with little effort they may not need careful notes to learn they may read aloud to themselves they like background music when they study they often avoid eye contact in order to concentrate and they are the people who prefer to hear information spoken in the form of songs poems and discussion now when we talk about visual learners they are the learners who picture words and concepts when they hear as images in their mind they get easily distracted in lecture with no visual aids and these are the learners who get overwhelmed with intense visual accompanied by lecture they benefit the most by the use of charts maps notes and flash cards while studying they are the visual learners now the turn is of tactile learners tactile learners actually in a traditional method they prefer writing out important notes they love to create study sheets connected to vivid examples they also like art and craft work and building blocks the last but not the least are the kinesthetic learners they for them role playing group presentation even standing up and answering can help a great to learn it also helps them remember important ideas so these are the kinesthetic learners therefore now we have understood that multi sensory learning is much better than the surface learning because the goal is to truly understand our course material and deep learners enjoy the process of learning for its own sake and there is always a use of more thinking skills multi sensory learning involves actively constructing learning experience it leads to better memory retention so we get deep understanding through multi sensory learning in contrast to surface learning therefore we must build our strength through the knowledge of our preferred learning style and let our students be benefited by our knowledge of teaching in a way they understand and learn better certainly the knowledge of multi sensory learning helps a teacher to have an open mind and to remember that there are many ideas beyond his or her own thank you very much so you see uh, we have learned uh, all different kinds of learners and learning styles and we also have a preferred learning style how many of you know which is your preferred learning style i also came to know a little late you know uh, while being in teaching that which is my preferred learning style and if you want to know you can refer to this book by ricky linksman how to learn anything quickly wherein you know there is an exercise given if you keep on answering it you get to know 
what is your preferred learning style how will you connect with your students first how will you create a bond with them maybe um, an online class or an offline class or a hybrid class for that matter now i'm just giving you some examples that you can use in your class to you know initiate a chapter which will bind their interest this is an ice breaking activity just have a look at it Here's a tricky question for you. Michael's mother had three children. The first child was named April. The second child was named May. What was the third child's name? The answer is Michael. If Michael's mother had three children, Michael is the youngest and her third child. Here's a brain teaser that really fooled us all. Are you ready? Here it goes. Which one of these sentences is correct? The yolk of the egg is white or the yolk of the egg are white? What's your answer? If you guessed neither, go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. Egg yolks are yellow, not white, so both statements are incorrect. Oh, a guy is running in a race and he passes up the person in second place. What place is he in now? The answer is he would be in second place, of course. If the guy running passes the person in second place, he has now overtaken that second place position. Okay, here's a tough one. Michelle was born on December 28th, but her birthday always falls in the summer. How is this possible? Have you figured out the answer yet? If not, don't worry. It took us a while to figure it out too. The answer is, Michelle lives in the Southern Hemisphere. Places like Australia and New Zealand have their winter during our summer. So for Michelle, even though her birthday is in December, it falls in the summertime in her so you see, this is one of the ways where you can engage students to initiate a class. Then we talk about finding the difference. You see, there are two pictures and your objective is very clear. You want the outcome in the preferred language. Suppose I teach English. So I tell them that you need to tell me the difference, maybe five differences in both the pictures by using the complete sentences. Can somebody write it down in a chat box? Any one difference? The way I want? Yes. What is the difference? One difference, if you can tell me, between two pictures. Third bird wings in the first row. That's how children also respond. That's how children also respond in a class, you know. But since I'm a language teacher, I'm a teacher of English, I would tell them to write down or to tell me the difference in a complete sentence. For example, if you say the second bird in the third row of the first picture has a closed beak, whereas the second bird in the third row of the second picture has an open beak. So, I have used a complete correct sentence to compare. That's what I want. So, what you can do, you can guide them one with one example and then get multiple answers from them. So, this is one example. This is the second picture now telling five differences. Yes, you can see the difference. And then you can yes so that's how you can take okay i've got the response let me see i don't understand what pocket you know so you can always tell them i bro pocket the girl in the second picture the pocket of gentleman is different in second picture but when you need to compare two statements or compare two pictures you have to use the language also like that. Yes? So you need to train your children like that. Okay? Then we can have one more complex one. A little tough.
All right, so you can use this. All right, another important way. You know, we have forgotten riddles. If you remember earlier, we used to use riddles in a class to engage children. I have brought one example for you. Can anybody solve this puzzle out? Please read it and tell me how can you solve, resolve this issue. I hope you've understood now. What do we want? Yes, can anybody solve it, please? Taking shifts, how? The adult is a fisherman. No, there are two adults in a family, mother and father, two children, and when fisherman means a boatman, right. And then the condition is that only one adult or two children can go to the other side. And everybody has to go that side. The kids will go with fishermen. No, either a fisherman, a boatman or two children can go. Mother fisherman and a child first. No, only two children or one adult can go. Through the bridge, maybe. No, there's no bridge. My kids will go with boatmen. No, they cannot travel. No, it has to be two kids or one adult. Any other idea? Kids will go. No, two children go first. One of them comes back. Mother goes then. Then other child comes back. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. You got the idea. Now let me explain. First two children go. One child comes back, the mother goes. The child who's already there comes back and then both the children go. Then one child comes back and the father goes. Then one child there comes back and then both the children go. Then one child comes back, the boatman or the fisherman go there. And then the other child comes back and then both the children go there. So the whole family is that side. Fisherman will bring the boat back to this side. And then the whole family is shifted there. So that's the trick. Okay, uh, some uh, very beautiful answers given. So thank you very much. You could solve it very immediately, although it is not that easy. Yes, so thank you very much for that. And uh, you got the idea. So what happens immediately, you can grab the attention of children. Yes, and then you can always involve them in such activities. Uh, now you see there are some examples of class participation and activities. Yes. How can you make teaching learning process effective by performing arts, role play, role swipe, flipped classroom, story knitting, and story weaving? I'm showing you some pictures. I'll show you some videos also as per the availability of time. But just to give you the idea, please have a look. Because visuals, you know, present a better idea. So, Chorus singing, poem recitation, group presentations, whether online or offline class, theater, theatrical performances, give children the experience, never forgettable experience. Yes, give them the opportunity. And they come up with beautiful ideas. Language, in languages, you can always tell them to prepare comic strips. It's a wonderful idea. You know, they weave story through comic strips. Virtual art, art integration, wall hangings, cutouts. Look at the pictures. So beautifully they've prepared. Another example, wall hanging, cutouts, hand puppets, finger puppets that children make. They come up with beautiful ideas. You just give them the opportunity, virtual art, puppet show, 
story narration using stick puppets finger puppets hand puppets and then narrate the story see post a read aloud board yes with the stick ons with the stick on sheets they can write down the favorite part of a story they write down the setting the solution what we are reading to get to, together so they write about characters problems settings solution their own ideas their analysis using uh, stick on sheets yeah chits the other one is compare and contrast which is the graphic organizer user on the right hand side can somebody tell me we call it geo graphic organizer which one is this yes what do we call this when what is when when diagram thank you very much ms ranjita you know it all <laughs> very good so it's wonderful uh, you know technique to use compare and contrast things maybe two uh, characteristics of two you know different objects so in the center we write all the commonalities okay now think pair share repeat so these are the classroom activities where you have a group size of two students and how do you do this you can create questions based on a particular topic taught in the class you can pair up your students for this activity give them enough time to think and come out with solutions they will be able to share their thoughts on those particular topics now the benefit is <clears throat> with this task students can engage themselves in conversation with partners and develop their confidence and communication skills with this there is another activity that can be done from 2 to 4 so what can we do children those who are sitting on the desks they turn their faces so from two they one pair discusses the same with the other pair so that's how it goes on so this is another activity one is think pair share the other one is from two to four so that can also be done to engage students creatively mind mapping and venn diagram so very important for children to learn this graphic organizers and use so that they can retain the information for a longer time and maximum information in their minds now the other one for the tactile learners you no know, or maybe for the visual learners you see the class displays encourage students to brag a little make yourself proud yes create a simple colorful grid that students can use to display their best work for all to see add their names if you like or leave it blank but encourage every student to display something regularly there this is a wonderful idea just to brag a little next is inspiring students to speak english to use the campus language at our school english is the campus language and we take out the star of the week for motivation for motivating and guiding them so what do we write i am a star of the week and we write the name of a student for you know his his or her achievement and i am unique with a photograph and then we go one step ahead we have <clears throat> the english superstars there is a big tree there wherein the photograph of one photograph from each section of the student uh, class after a month is chosen and taken out and is put at reception with the photograph with the name and class and section of the child so all the visitors and parents and whosoever comes you know they have a look at it that helps children to feel motivated and to converse in the language you want so this is i'm just giving you the ideas you can use all or any one whatever suits you whatever you like whatever you are impressed with and you can always do now this is domino card activity now i have actually recorded it for uh, you know some of the teachers they wanted to see it now how do we play this uh, you take the visiting card like cards and then you write some new words 
or maybe small terms or definitions on one side and at the back side of it you write the meaning or uh, the uh, the definition or the answer of a short question of some other question at the back of it so the same question doesn't have the same meaning same uh, answer and then you distribute it in the class and then first tell you ask to read out the question if he gives the right answer then everybody says thumbs up and gives him a you know they clap and give thumbs up and if the answer is wrong then the other child sitting there next to the first child gets the chance to speak the word and if he gives the right answer then he speaks the word written at the back this becomes very interesting activity for recapitulation uh, just a minute sample instructional plan wherein you mentioned the date class subject topic number of periods and the content required learning objectives so learning objective has to be divided in two parts one based on academic content like enriching vocabulary empathizing understanding uh, whatever and then the second one learning objective should be based on 21st century skill yes so this is important that you need to plan out your lesson uh, which will talk about collaboration communicating critical analyzing inculcating life skills etc then you can mention about teaching aids instructional procedure assessment of learning objectives you know how are you going to assess as i told you assessment is important yes and then follow up how are we going to follow up this and then the assignment to be given and then at last you need to mention about the self assessment you know to be written after the completion of the text that's important so that's how uh, a sample i mean an instruction plan to be prepared yes and you see on the other side what what is the development of competencies say see stage 1 you need to mention about pedagogical approaches and how students are going to be engaged in which activities and stage 2 performance assessment which talks about brainstorming and the activities and the right hand side you talk about what children are going to do so that's how the lesson is to be prepared these are some of the lesson plans but i think we do not have time this was one example which i have taken from the cbsc uh, uh, you know uh, from nep 2020 handout only so you can just uh, refer to this and this gives you the idea you know how can we prepare a lesson plan based on nep 2020 and how can we make it more effective so that's how i wanted to talk about many other things but i am afraid we don't have time so i uh, just stop it here and uh, would like to keep it open now because two minutes are there the, the meeting will get uh, off automatically so i just want to know your takeaways uh, you know something that is taught in 5 to 6 hours offline session not possible in one one and a half hours but i hope i was able to give you a fair idea you know how the uh, instructional lesson plan can be made and how can we make our lesson planning more effective by using different techniques keeping in mind different learners so uh, that's all from my side i just want you to write something of your take away if you can write down in the chat box please so that i get to know that you know it was i mean i was able to uh, interact with you mm -hmm. and then could give give you the wind up sorry meanwhile kriba ma'am can wind up yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, please. yeah thank, thank you. you so much uh, ma'am bhavna arora ma'am for a wonderful and amazing informative class because we have got lot of ideas thank you so much and uh, now i think we don't have much time for the question and answer session uh, so what about the question and question and answer session sir no time we can wind up yeah so thank you so much ma'am and there are several takeaways from this session and we are sure that our educators have got a uh, lot of ideas and let me conclude today's program by expressing my deep uh, sense of gratitude and uh, uh, i conclude by wishing you all a relaxed uh, i mean uh, days and uh, i just wanted to thank uh, bhavna ma'am uh, then our uh, dr abdul uh, salam sir and organizing this beautiful webinar and mrs annie john ma'am for her presence and deep sense of appreciation to the wonderful it and technical head mr arun mohan and next i would like to extend my thankfulness to all, all the participants for their contributions in making the webinar a success successful one so uh, thank you so much thank you very much <laughs> thank, thank you, you for making me a part of this <laughs>
very short of time. Yes. Uh, excuse me, participants. Uh, uh, this will be, you know, uh, will be there in the YouTube uh, after some time. Thank you so much for joining, and uh, let us thank uh, Bhavna Ma'am for her, you know, uh, renderings and uh, giveaways. And uh, hope you know you will take uh, all these takeaways uh, into consideration uh, in your planning. Of course, this is a holistic lesson planning wherein I would like you to you know start from the objectives and end with the recapture recapitulation, and also take care of the differential uh, teaching methodology. So thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.